Hey guys, welcome back. We are in the booth with it running and I'm ready to start spraying my sealer white. Now what I did was, uh, like I said, I'm gonna, I taped off this seven because we're saving that seven and I'm just gonna put material in this direction. There's no reason for me to spray back here. I'm just trying to cover out this 20. So it should be two to three coats to make this 20 completely go away. So we'll let that dry up, put a coat of hot rod sparkle over that and then we'll be ready to lay our numbers. So this is coat number one, this is what it looks like. Hey guys, welcome back. As you can see, coat number one is totally dry, and this is exactly what we want. You want this product to be dry to the touch before you go on to your next coat. And that's gonna help with two things. It's gonna help with how fast the product dries, and in terms of film build, it's gonna allow this to really lay down nice and flat and smooth. There's no reason to go and put four or two heavy, heavy wet coats on, and then you're gonna be waiting an hour for this to dry, where this is, I mean, these are booth conditions, so we have air movement in here, and I have a little dryer that we use, um, and that was dry to the touch. This has been five minutes, not even five minutes. So obviously with, with little less airflow or open shop conditions, it's gonna take a little bit more time, but that's why we want you to work in lighter coats. There's no reason to go ahead and really hammer on multiple coats or just one wet, wet heavy coat, because it's just gonna hurt you in the long run. The other reason I put my coat on, my first coat, a little lighter is just in case there's any kind of surface contamination that you didn't get rid of it's easy to see that right away when you hit your first coat and it's easier to dry uh, that lighter coat of material and go ahead and sand something out or kind of fix something that that you didn't necessarily see where if you put a, a medium heavy coat on there now you have to allow that to dry and there's always a chance that that's going to skin over and you're going to tear it as you start to sand it so we want you to work in lower you know lighter coats thinner the better i'd rather have you guys do three or four medium coats than two heavy heavy wet coats so this is going to be coat number two Hey guys, welcome back again. We are on to our third and final coat. This should be the last coat. You guys can see, actually, I, I don't know what it looks like on camera, but when the color's applied, it looks very transparent, but as it dries, the opacity definitely comes back. You know, it really starts to cover well once that dries. So this is gonna be our third coat. Uh, should basically cover what's left of the black, and uh, we'll be moving on to our Hot Rod Sparkle White. So this is coat number three. Hey guys, welcome back. We are all done spraying the black. And actually all I used for this was our Wicked Black. So that was a piece of cake to do the sevens, just to mimic the other seven. And I just am in the middle of untaping this as we speak so I can get ready to actually apply the clear coat. So I just wanted to touch base again on what it is that we did. This was a base of our Autoborn Sealer White. And the reason I chose the Autoborn Sealer White is a couple, a couple reasons. A, it dries to a very nice, smooth, slick finish. Uh, and it's, it has very little texture. So it's very ideal for doing graphics over that. Again, so the fact that I had to tape out and cut these by hand, the black, I had nice, clean, tight lines and I don't have to worry about anything because that sealer is just a nice, uh, hard surface, uh, uh, very durable in terms of taping on it and not leaving any kind of tape trace marks. A lot of times certain colors have a tendency to stay a little tacky and uh, the sealer does not do that. So it's a very nice, uh, even surface to work on. So we did the Autoborn sealer. You guys saw that it was covered until we got rid of the, the two and the zero. Uh, I let that dry. I did a drop coat of our Hot Rod Sparkle White just to give an effect coat. And again, it's probably not very visible on camera because it isn't cleared yet, but that was what this original uh, Numella had for the background. It was a Hot Rod Sparkle White. So we taped that out, did our numbers, the seven, seven in our uh, Wicked Black. And now I'm ready to go ahead and clear. So we had plenty of dry time. We actually let this sit overnight before I came in and did my numbers. It's the second day now. We, we started this late in the day. So this has had plenty of time to dry. Typically between doing the graphics and everything with good air movement, I would say about an hour before you were to go ahead and tape over the top of this to, to do any kind of stencil work like that. But it's been overnight. So now what I'm going to do is put my first coat of clear. And if you guys remember, I said I was going to go right to the edge of this line. So I'm going to put one coat of clear on let that get almost tacky to the point where I'm ready for my next coat 
And then what I'm going to do is actually pull this tape and pull this fine line to reveal that black pinstripe that's on the edge of this and I'm going to put my second coat to the edge of that black. So this way what we're doing is we're going to just stepping that clear, that transition, so it won't be such a hard line. So like I said, we're not clearing this whole door, we're just staying inside this repair area or the, the number area so it'll make just a little nice easy transition so there's not so much of a big hard graphic line. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other side untaped. Get this all tacked off, mix up my clear, and uh, we're ready to go. And actually, uh, we'll talk about the clear real quick too, is I'm going to use a solvent, a 2K uh, solvent-based clear, and that's our PPG EC550. That's what we recommend. That's what we use here on all of our water. It's actually part of their Enviro-based system from PPG, and it's designed for water-based and waterborne finishes. And it's a really, really nice crystal clear, clear coat, very durable as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get that mixed up, and we'll see you guys in a minute. Hey guys, welcome back. We are back in the booth uh, for the last session in here now, and that's going to be applying our top coat, our clear coat. Um, so just really quickly we'll run through, again, kind of be repetitive on this, but I want to let you guys know exactly what it is that we did. We based all this out in our Autoborne Sealer White, and then we put two coats of Hot Rod Sparkle over the top of that. Then we let that dry, and then I laid out my numbers to match the original seven number, uh, and I just did that in our Wicked Black. And, and everything was done one step right on top of another, just thoroughly dry between all steps. Uh, and again, now I'm gonna apply a urethane 2K automotive clear coat over the top of this. Um, if you guys remember, I mentioned that this is a PPG EC550. Uh, that's what we like. I've sprayed this clear for a long time, and I like this clear for going over waterborne products, water-based products. Um, you don't have to use PPG EC550, you don't have to, but uh, we just recommend if you are going to use something in just a quality automotive 2K for an automotive finish. Um, the other part that, we, that I want to touch on too in terms of the auto borne sealer is you can use that as your base color. You can clear directly over that. On this, this particular application, we put a drop coat of the hot rod sparkle, but all that is is a sparkle effect. So there's no reason that you can't use the uh, sealer as, as a ground coat or base coat, color coat, and clear directly over that. As long as it's thoroughly dry, um, you're good to go. So uh, this has been dry for about an hour now after I did the black uh, numbers, and uh, we're ready to go with our first coat of clear. So this is number one. Hey everyone, welcome back. We are done with this project. You guys can see, this is what it looks like after two coats of our uh, 2K urethane clear coat. And we gave a quick little bake. It's almost dry and it's pretty good. We're gonna let this dry up overnight and I'll come in tomorrow and hit these edges with a little bit of 2500 just to make that transition a little smoother and, and even uh, without any kind of a tape edge. So just a quick recap on what we did. Um, we started with our Autoborn sealer. That was my first coat of the white, if you guys remember, to cover all the existing numbers and, and get that down. And uh, that is what we recommend for our ground coat. Anytime you guys start a paint job or project, we always recommend starting with our Autoborn sealers because they are a great solid foundation because of the way they cover, because of the way they sand and how nice they dry and how smooth of a finish they have. It's a great starting point. So we did that over a 400, 600 scratch is perfectly fine. Uh, this case I did 400 DA and I went back and red scotch patted the edges where I could not get my DA in without having to go onto the existing finish on the door here. Um, Again, when I'm using a red scotch pad, you're not trying to dig into anything. All you're trying to do is just knock the shine down, make it nice and uniform and even. Um, for, so again, 400 with a red scotch is fine with that. If you guys are doing a project where you're going over an existing OEM finish, and, and OEM, I mean sanded clear coat or uh, sanded single stage, um, and if you're going to use our pearls or our metallics or our aluminums um, without using a sealer first, that's totally fine. Um, but just keep in mind, you're going to want to refine that scratch a little more. So I would step up to a gray scotch pad and 800 dry. Only because sometimes the, the really fine metallics have a tendency to settle into sand scratches. So if you have, especially if you're hand sanding, if you do have any kind of sand marks that are more linear, you might see it on a side cast where you start to see a little bit of a fuzzy look in the metallic or actually fall into those sand scratches. That's the last thing you can do. Sometimes you don't see that until you clear it. So if you're doing it on an effect like that and you're using a fine product and not using 
using our sealer, then just keep that in mind. You're going to want to refine that scratch a little more. Usually 800 is, is more than enough. I don't recommend going any finer than that. But again, I just want to reiterate how important and how, how well our sealers work for that. So back to that. Sealer went down first. We gave three coats of sealer, let that dry sufficiently before I applied the Hot Rod Sparkle White. So it was about an hour before I came back in and added my Hot Rod Sparkle White. I did a coat and a half, made sure that was nice and dry. We let that sit for about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And again, we have good airflow in here, so it's, it's really important to keep that in mind. Um, and I let that dry. I came back and taped out my sevens. I did that in uh, the Wicked Black and let that dry for about an hour before we put two coats of a urethane clear on it. So that wraps this project up. I hope that answers any uh, questions that you guys might have. And again, I'm Chris Arpin at Create Text Colors, and we'll see you guys next time.